going to go ahead and get started. It looks like we have a great um, group already with us. And as people go ahead and join, um, they can hop on, hop off. And without further ado, uh, my name is Dr. Lauren Thompson, and I've had the pleasure of being the Honors 402 uh, Supervisor and Mentor for Ms or I should say Ms. Anna Galdoni, and she is here to present her thesis for you. And so I'm gonna share my screen because Anna has prepared a PowerPoint for us. So here is this, and we can move it to all right, so um, without further ado, I would like to introduce our speaker and her title of her thesis is, quote, we have nothing to gain and everything to lose, end quote. African-Americans fight for freedom during the Civil War. And so I'm going to mute myself and I'm gonna turn it over to you, Anna, to talk to us and tell us about what you've been working on all year. Thank you, LT, so much. I could not have done any of this without you, so I really want to say thank you, first of all. So I got into this actually with my women's history class. I actually want to thank Dr. Lemons for this, too. Um, I had to do a project, and I did it over women and their contributions to the Civil War, and that made me thinking, well, obviously, it's just not the white males' bravery, heroics, and legacy that are going with the Civil War and helping the, the Union win. And after seeing the women's contributions, that made me think what other minority contributions were there to the Civil War? And that made me thinking, how did African Americans, both free and enslaved, help with the Civil War and help the Union win it? And also, I decided to do this because when I was in high school, I did not hear much of the um, minority stories in the Civil War and many or in many other wars. It was just the white male story. And I believe that many more people should learn and discover this because President Lincoln stated that without the military help of black freedmen, the war against the South could not have been won. And that's a major quote by Lincoln stating that if we didn't have, have the help of these people, then the Civil War could not have been won. And that is a major impact. And it was both freed and enslaved African Americans contributing to the Civil War. And I just believe more people should learn about their story. And prior to the Civil War even starting, African Americans, oh, sorry, you can switch to the next slide, LT. Thank you. And prior to the war starting, African Americans were already claiming that this war was about ending, ending slavery and receiving equal rights, where many white people were believing that this was just to preserve the Union and over states' issues. But that is not the issue. And African Americans believed that this war was about ending slavery and that this was the perfect opportunity to show their dedication to the union and show that they wanted to live in this country and be treated as equals compared to the white citizens. Unfortunately, during their time in the Civil War, they faced multiple forms of discrimination and setbacks. African American soldiers were treated very terrible. Some compared it to being back in slavery if they were former slaves. And they also received unequal pay, unequal pay compared to their white counterparts. And they would be battling that for years in order to try to get their back pay from the Civil War. And the government was also not on their side many times as well. And public support was also against them because they did not believe that this should have been an African-American war fighting. They should believe this is just a white male's war who should be fighting and getting the union back together. And all of this combined just showed that racism, racism demonstrated black America that African Americans had racism against them, like Jim Crow, long before the guns fell silent at Appomattox. Thank you. And like stated before, African Americans were the first on boards when the war started, trying to get people to advocate to go and fight for this war. It was both freed and enslaved advocating for freedoms. This war could end slavery, and African Americans wanted a part of it. A former slave named Frazier said that being free meant that he could earn pay from his labors to support themselves and the, to help the government in maintaining their liberty. But being slaves and second class citizens, they could not maintain their liberty and help the government as well because they were not treated as first class citizens. And this was felt by countless of other slaves, many who ended up running away to go and help join the union and their efforts. Unfortunately, many slaves could not leave because of their circumstances, but they did fight and try to negotiate their own freedom with their masters. 
because freedom meant that these people could be their own person and decide what they wanted to do and not have a person decide for them, even if they were still living in the South. It gave them a voice that they once did not have. In addition to that, the slaves who were leaving, some of them wanted to join the Union Army in order to take revenge against their former slave owners. Even if they were not fighting, fighting their former slave owner, they were still fighting a master who owned slaves and was um, treating slaves terribly. And unfortunately, the law forbid African Americans to serve until 1863, but that did not stop African Americans from advocating to wanting to join the army. Because in 1861, a group of African Americans in Massachusetts, Massachusetts asked the state legislator to remove the word white from its um, from the law that stated that only white people could serve and they wanted to be able to serve. And unfortunately, this law was um, passed down. But that did not stop African Americans from still advocating. They began to form their own troops and even to write the Secretary of War in order to demand African American males being allowed to serve in the army. One example of this is Jacob Dotson, who wrote to the Secretary of War stating that he had 300 men ready to serve at a moment's notice. All they needed to do was be a couple, a couple days or months of training and they would be ready to fight. But unfortunately, they were blatantly denied because of their skin color and they were not allowed to fight. And African Americans felt that they were being left out on something as a result of this because they felt that this was vital to the future of ending slavery and if they were not a part of it, then slavery could continue to go on for millions of people. So as a result of not being able to serve, they found their own ways to act in the North and the South. And in the North, they had charity aids and organizations. And this they had, they raised money, they sent supplies, and they advocated for ending slavery and allowing African males the right to serve. People got on board with this, mainly, mainly abolitionists and people who were in support of ending slavery. And even if they were not free, nor free Northerners, African Americans, slaves as well contributed as well. When they were leaving their plantation, they were going to the Union Army and they were employed as teamsters, carpenters, cooks, nurses, laundresses, blacksmiths, bridge builders, laborers, servants, spies, scouts, and guides. And to the right of the screen is Susie King Taylor, who was a former slave herself and then ran and helped the union and she was a nurse and teacher. But this was both males and females helping the union and wanting to help fight and serve. Thank you, LT. And because of the increased number of slaves coming over, the government had to address it and they end up terming it contrabands. And this was a technical term applied to military goods that was sold to an enemy nation by a neutral state. But because this acquired a new meaning in 1861, and therefore several years after, all fugitive slaves were referred to as contrabands. They were not returned to the owners, and instead they were put to work on non-military capacities. So this means that African-American slaves who ran away did not have to be returned to their former owners. They could stay and help the union because there were multiple benefits. Two being that they overall served the union interest and in helped fighting the Confederacy and ending slavery, or getting the union back together as many white males, white population saw it. And the other reason why is because some of the soldiers did not want to do the work that the African Americans were doing. They believed it was below them and that it was a second class citizen job. And that is another main reason that why they were used in non-military capacities. Thank you, LT. Before they were able to join the army though, African Americans were able to join the Navy in September of 1861. And this was because there not enough men was joining the Navy. And if they opened it to African American men, they knew they would be open up to serve. And that happened. African American men did join the Navy, but it was not in, it was in non-segregated groups, but that does not mean discrimination did not occur. They faced terrible conditions in the army. I mean, in the Navy, I apologize. And by that, they had the white male counterparts with two stereotypical plays of their African-American counterparts, which would cause them to be segregated whenever they were not in battle duties. And this would cause them to cook their own food and eat in separate areas. But African-American Navy, Navy, the people in the Navy, they did have considerable contributions because many of them were former slaves and they knew the waterways and landscapes of where the boats were going. So they were able to have considerate help there. And even though they were not able to join the army, they continued to advocate for allowing other people to join the army because they were having considerable help in the Navy and the new people were, join, were to join the army, they would as well have considerable help. Thank you, LT. 
But then there was the issue of the government and people not supporting them. President Lincoln was one of these. He would state that the, this war could be about emancipation, but when he got so much white backlash from this, from both people in the war, the soldiers, and civilians, he ended up retracting his statement because he didn't want people to pull out of the war or the soldiers to pull out of the war because then he would be losing soldiers that he desperately needed. So he tried to appease them over allowing equal citizenship and equal rights in the country. And for those already in the Navy, they were promised pay, but they were not given that pay. They had to wait months and sometimes years in order to get that pay. So this caused problems in the end too because that was dire need for their families who needed that pay to support themselves. Thank you, LT. And then finally, in May of 1863, the government created the United States Color Troops or the USCT and allowed the first African American males to serve in the army. And after this, they encouraged many others to join. Frederick Douglass, who was too old, unfortunately, to serve, but he encouraged many others to serve and his son served as well. And these men who did join to fight, they were willing to learn to fight because they wanted to end the horrors of slavery. And for example, Officer Higgins, who had a visitor come and visit his troop before and after being trained, he described them as a marble block before, not being done at all, but after being done, after the training, he described them as a piece of work by Michelangelo, carved a masterpiece. And then another commander said that he had no fears of putting his life in the hands of his troops because they were so trained and that they wanted to fight and fight against the Confederacy and slavery. And to the right is just a picture of trying to get African-American males to serve in the army. Thank you, LT. Unfortunately, during their time in service, they faced multiple forms of discrimination. And this was not just soldiers, this was people also working on the encampment as well. Unfortunately, the government, it tried to get as many non-discriminatory um, officers in, and serve to um, lead the United States color troops, but they did not always get everyone passed to be non-discriminatory. There were some commanding officers that reported they felt less regret. I apologize. There were commanding officers reporting that they felt less regret if the, they lost black soldiers compared to white soldiers. And the Confederacy acts against the US, and the Confederacy acts against the USCT as well. Once the Confederacy heard that Af um, African Americans were being allowed to serve in the army, they put an act out that stated that any um, commander who found an African American troop could shoot them or do anything under their, dis under their discretion. A majority of those times, they would just kill any troops, African American troops that they found. An example of this is the Fort Pillow Massacre, where over 300 soldiers were killed instead of taken prisoner of war because they were African American. And majority of times, these soldiers were not seeing battles. They were doing hard, heavy labor each day with no change in the routine. And this included building forts, throwing up ramparts, or felling trees that could be laid side by side to make a quarter that would not turn into mud. They moved ammunition, unloaded supplies, drove wagons, and cared for the huge number of horses needed by the army. Some manned boats and coast carriers or worked as cooks and butchers. And these routines would not change much. They would have to be doing the hard labor that the white male soldiers did not want to do. And to carry on with this, their rations were unequal. After doing this hard day's work, they did not have shelter to go under like their white counterparts had tents. They were sleeping underneath the elements and they had little to no food. Even though this was all soldiers, African-Americans were even given less food and water in order to survive. Thank you, LT. And when African-Americans did go into battle, they had worse weapons to train with and to go into battle with. There was one regiment that had three different guns that they were training with and in battle that caused major catastrophe because some of the guns take longer to load and that, ca and that caused major deaths for them. And when they were injured, they were given worse medical attention. There was one African-American soldier who described in a diary entry that he was still wearing the same bandages two weeks after the battle and laying next to dead counterparts who the medical people did not want to take out because they did not want to um, they did not want to operate on African-American soldiers. And the biggest struggle was just equal pay. The Militia Act passed in 1862 had set the pay of white privates at $13 per month with $3.50 added each month as a clothing allowance. And the expectation that African-Americans would serve mainly as laborers 
which was not true after 1863, they became more soldiers, the law set their, age, their wages at $10 per month from which $3 were deducted from the expense of clothing. To make matters worse, often this meager pay was late or long delayed in the coming. And this was a major problem because these African Americans needed this money in order to send it back to their families who were struggling and trying to get on their feet after getting out of the bonds of slavery or those who were still being discriminatory against and not having the jobs that they could to support their families. And one um, Sergeant, George Stevens, he compared being in the army as back into slavery. He said it was not what he expected at all and he was not being treated equal and he was not getting the pay that he rightly deserved. And this became so bad that the group on the right, the 54th Massachusetts Regiment, they sent an ultimatum to President Lincoln saying, are we soldiers or are we laborers? And unfortunately, Lincoln could never answer that because he did not want to lose the support of the white population. And these African Americans would just continue to fight this discriminatory um, discrimination for years to come. Thank you, LT. And then after the war, it would just continue to go on. And then with now the slaves becoming free, it was the idea, where are all these people going to go? Are we going to live in harmony? And that was unfortunately not the plan. The idea of colonization came up where that would mean that African Americans, both free and now free, would be sent to another place to live in the Caribbean or in Africa. And this received immediate backlash from the po Black population because this believed this would further divide the races because you were separating them based on their skin color in addition to the, them going to a land where they know nothing about. They don't know the language, the culture, and the way of life, and it would be really hard for them just to set up. They, they grew up in America, they were raised in America, and they knew how to live in America, and that's where they wanted to stay. And when, when, and when soldiers were trying to get support from their officials, some of their officials did not even want them to have equal rights. They turned their back against them even when these soldiers gave it their all to fight for freedom. It shows that laws can be changed, but people need to change as well. Thank you. Thank you, LT. And we can see in the war years how people of color will be treated after. Jim Crow was in the Civil War with unequal pay, unequal supplies, unequal treatment of African Americans with unfair wages, medical and ownership of anything. African Americans were not allowed to testify in courts and this would still, even with laws and amendments being changed, they'd still not be able to do a majority of things that white citizens were able to do. It shows that during the war, people were fighting for emancipation, but the fight for equality was just beginning. Thank you, LT. Are there any questions or um, points that I can go over again? All right. Thank you so much, Anna. That was wonderful.